Welcome everyone, Lonnie Payne here with another pinball video for you. This is a part two of my Apollo 13 restoration and it covers the teardown of the play field. Now, I don't cover every little aspect. You don't need to see me taking plastics off. Everybody can do that. What this mainly covers is the techniques I use when I'm restoring a pinball machine that have to do with the play field. Now the original video was 25 minutes. I decided to go ahead and cut it into two parts, just make it a little bit smaller. So the two parts, part one and part two of the actual play field restoration or tear down. And this covers the first part, the second part will be up shortly. And if you're ready to get going, let's go see how we do it. All right, got the moon out. And you can tell, I had to do a lot of taking out of stuff to get the moon out. I had to take the ramp and a few other things out. But what I explained to you is I like to finish things as I go. And this is gonna be a full restoration so one of the things I'll end up doing is I'm going to take this bracket off and have it powder coated. And that way, everything under the play field is going to look nice and tight. So in this case, I won't be able to completely finish this because i got to take this off for powder coating. But one of the other things I'm doing is I'm going to try and make some custom things for this moon. You can see I've, I've kind of 3D printed. I've started playing with some models. And I'm going to maybe try and make something that's a little more realistic than what came in there. It's going to be a challenge. you got the the mount for the magnet and everything. Uh, but on something like this, where I've got to actually design something and come up with something from scratch, I'll end up putting these things aside. I'll clean them up as much as I can, but I won't finish them because I don't have the new piece that I'm doing yet. So I will do these a little bit later. Same thing with a little module here. I, I don't like this flame, so I'm working on some, some custom engine pieces and stuff, but I don't have the parts to finish them yet. So there will be some exceptions to that rule where I will work on some stuff later. But as a general rule, I want to try and finish things. So like this ramp I took off. So before I go to the next step, I will clean this up, take everything apart, clean it up, put it back together, and it'll be ready to install in the game. And then I'll move on to the next part. So it, it takes a little bit longer to, to get it apart, but it makes the assembly process better. And I get a I get a good list of parts I need you know, beforehand than working on stuff afterwards and real, realizing I need something. So I'll get this one cleaned up and then move on to the next step. All right, got the moon mechanism broken down. I got the bracket here and that's, that's going to the powder code box. And I've got all the parts in here that are going for the moon. And like I said, it it's not finished because I'm going to do some mods to it so I'm just going to kind of put that aside for now just put that in my parts box and everything was good with it so there's nothing to write on the list for for new parts so now we'll continue on with the next thing going to break down this ramp and redo it and then move on all right continuing on with the ramp restoration the metal pieces are some of the more tedious work you do because you got all the, the ball lines, which I didn't take a before picture, but um, you normally have ball lines in the metal. And then the ramp flaps are usually in pretty bad shape. So what you do is you end up sanding the ball marks out, and then you graduate your sandpaper up to kind of whatever polish you want. So I, I usually start out with about um, 600 or so grit sandpaper. And I use Novus 2 and a little water, and I'll just I'll rub that. You can see all my sandpapers here. So I'll start with 600, then you go to 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,500, 3,000, and 5,000. And you just keep working. It, it just takes a while. You just take a little bit of grease. And then when you're finally done, I don't take it all the way to a, like a pure mirror finish, but it's very nice finish and reflective. And you can see, you know, you can see my finger reflecting in there. You know, I mean, it's, it's a pretty nice finish, but it's not a pure mirror. And then on the ramp flaps, you know, these things are like blue steel. And most of the ones I've ever done, just they're, they're corroded or a little bit of rust on them. You can kind of see that was the back of it. You can kind of see how bad it was. And I already took the rust off of it. But on, on these, you know, if it's a pretty good piece of metal, I'll go ahead and try and save it. And the first step is taking all the blue off and the rust. And so you just use a wire you know, wire wheel and just run through it, be careful. And then once you're done, I kind of do the same thing. I started with, uh, I think it was 320 grit and then worked my way all the way up to 5,000. And 
It's a nice finish. I don't really care for the blue anyway, so I'll, I'll keep it like this. I'll put a little uh, clear coat coating on it to protect it. But once again, you can see it's pretty reflective. It's not really a mirror, but it's, it's pretty reflective, and so I'll be able to use that piece over. All right, so I'll get these pieces finished up and put back on, on the ramp, and then we'll move on to the next part. All right, one of the things I like to do when I do a complete restore is I re replace the coil wrappers on the coils. And you can see this is the original coil wrapper, and then here's the one I've replaced. And what you do is you print out, and I use a shipping label, the privacy ones, the ones that are a little bit thicker so you can't see anything under the, under the, the sticker. And I print them out. Here's uh, the website. You can see uh, where I get the coil wrappers. And so they have each of the numbers, so I print a sheet out of each coil, and there's usually multiple coils on a machine that, that use the same uh, wrapper, so you'll have plenty of them to do. But it just makes it a nice clean look, and we'll get that put together and show you how, how nice it is. Just remember when you're doing this, you've probably been messing with things, your hands are dirty. Go ahead and wash your hands, because once you start touching this paper, if you have that black soot on your hands, obviously you're going to get it on the paper. So this needs to be one of the last things you do when you're restoring a, a coil mechanism is, is replacing the paper. All right, so now we've got it all finished, put back together, and we're ready to be put in the box and wait for assembly, all nice and clean. All right, I'll show you one of my least favorite things to do is on the ball guides, you'll end up getting track marks from the ball. So I don't know if you can see that. You got that little line that follows where the ball is. Now this one's fairly light. Uh, here's one of the guides. Uh, you can probably see pretty good ball mark in there. Of course, the ones that have the curves in them are a lot harder to clean. But I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this one for you and show you what I do. This is a 320 grit buffing pad. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray a little crazy clean on here, and then I'm gonna sand it basically with this buffing pad, and we'll show you what the uh, what the final result is. You always want to sand with the grain of the steel. Try and get even coverage. Concentrating on that ball mark. Sometimes you may have to do this a couple of times, uh, depending upon how deep the mark is. If it's a pretty superficial mark like this one, we'll probably only have to do this once, but it's an older game that's really been played hard. You might have to, to do this several times and the, the metal might actually be damaged and you, you can't get it totally out, but you can at least get the color of it out and, and make it a lot less noticeable. Give just a little bit more, almost all gone. All right, now you look at it. There's no evidence of that ball mark anymore. It's a nice surface. Now, this is all personal preference. I'll leave it a lot. I'll leave it like this. If you want to try and get more of a, a mirror type finish, you can use just graduated sandpaper all the way up to say 5,000 grit and you have a little bit more of a, a shiny finish. But I just usually, this produces a nice, nice finish. It has some reflection in it, but it's, it's not mirrored. So, you know, that's a, that's a personal preference. So if you want a little bit more of a shine to it, just continue to graduate your sandpaper up and you can make it as shiny as you want. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the switches off. Now, normally I try and restore as I go, but the switches are going to be something that I'll actually wait till later. I don't have the new faces yet. So I'm just gonna take them off, tie them up under, and then I'll completely rebuild them once I get the, uh, the, the new target faces in. And then the flippers are kind of the same way. I've got to get a flipper kit. So I'm gonna take that and the whole mechanisms off, but I won't actually completely finish until I get ready to put it back together. Pop bumpers, I can partially restore those, but there's a couple parts that I need. And then I'm, I'm gonna experiment with the flappers. I think I'm going to send those to powder coat. So just kind of finish the rest of this uh, disassembly and we'll keep going. 
All right, got all the switches out. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take all these little uh, rollovers and place them under. And then I'm pull this pop-up down. And then the other things that have coils on them that are mounted underneath, go ahead and get all that stuff out of the way. All right, almost done with the play field here. Um, one of the last things I'm doing is one of the things I probably least like doing is taking these wire rails out. And the reason is, is the smaller ones, they have a little flat tab on the end. These things are only made to go in. They're not really made to come out. So if you just pull these things straight out, you will actually flake this wood right here. So what I normally do is I punch them through the bottom and then I shave it off to where it's round and then I pop them out and it does no damage and I haven't had any problem putting them back in. So that's the next step and we'll uh, keep on going. I'll show you what they look like on the bottom. All right, I've used a piece of wood to tap the top of this down and I was careful not to go all the way so because I don't want to make an indention underneath it. But if you look under here, you can see where it popped that wood out. You can see the little flat pieces. And that's, that's what would happen if you just pull that thing straight out, you have the risk of, of making the top of your play field look like that. So that's why I push it through and then I'll file those little flat pieces off and then we'll pull it out the top. All right, so now you can see the little extrusions have been filed off. So now we'll take it out the top. All right, there we go. Beautiful, no damage. All right, everything is off the play field except the side rails. And now I got to work on the, the sockets. One thing I don't like about the Sega is they kind of take a trip back to the EM days is all your sockets are actually stapled into the play field instead of, you know, screw sockets, which most of the other manufacturers use. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with these things because it's a lot easier to have these things totally gone when you clear coat than trying to you know, put something in them, keep them clean. So kind of an aggravation, but we'll, we'll make it work. But so I got to work on the sockets and then take the side rails off and she'll be ready to mount on the, the other board. All right. All the sockets are now <clears throat> removed from GI kind of a nightmare. It's just, it's hard to take them out without damaging. So I'm probably gonna have to end up putting all new sockets in for GI and I'm probably going to put some screw terminals in or uh, screw down sockets for a lot of them just because I don't like the staples. But anyways, all the plates, uh, all the mounting plates, anything that had a big metal mounting plate is off. That's all going to be powder coated. So the underneath the play field at this point is pretty much done. One of the things I've done as I've gone is as I take a bulb out of a colored insert, I mark it on my clipboard what color of bulb, kind of the way I inventory it. I don't usually buy the kits. I just do it myself. So the bottom of the play field is pretty much done. So now just got to take the side rails off and then I'll mount it on the regular box to start working on the play field. All right, got everything done on the play field. Everything's stripped down, all the sockets removed, side rails got it mounted on my, my work box here. And it's actually fastened with four screws on the corners, keeps the play field nice and stable, support on all four sides. So if I need to sand, this is what I'll have it on when I clear coat. And so now we're ready to start working on the damage on the play field and keep going. All right, everyone, this has been part two of the Apollo 13 restoration covering the first half of the play field teardown. Be looking for part two of the teardown here shortly. And just remember, if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you on part two of part three, part two. We'll see you in part three, which is part two of the play field. I don't know, dude.